Welcome to the RenderWorks Getting Started Guide. The first chapter here will be covering RenderWorks cameras, but just a quick note about the chapters in this guide. You don't require the previous chapter to go to the next chapter. They all work independently of each other, unlike the other industry series guides where you have to go from beginning to end. If you want to later, it's easy to just reference a particular chapter and just do the exercises there if there's something new you'd like to learn. Otherwise, go ahead and follow them in order the way we've put them here. We've tried to order them such that it'll give you the most experience with the most important tools in an order that sort of makes sense. First thing, we'll go to the Visualization Toolset, and we'll click the RenderWorks Camera Tool. There's other ways to create RenderWorks cameras, but just 2D is very easy. Uh, to give you an idea of this model here, the front little bit here is a pool. This is a small patio, a small front addition porch on the document, and this is the main part of the house here. So we'll just be clicking once here, which will first set the location of the camera. So if you were holding a physical camera, that's where you'd be standing. And we want to aim this generally at the middle of the front part of the house here. There we are. Now, with that camera object selected, click Activate Camera which is going to take our view directly in to look at what that camera is looking at. And we're pretty close. This is almost what we want. However, you'll notice it doesn't look like a rendering. That's generally because the default for most views is wireframe. There's two places that will be. We created this RenderWorks camera in wireframe, top plan view. So anytime we come back to this camera, it will revert to wireframe. But I'd rather it be OpenGL, so we'll hit that. And now, that just changed the RenderWorks camera. To change the actual rendering mode, we'll go to View, Rendering, and OpenGL. OpenGL will tend to render very quickly after you've done it the first time. I've already used OpenGL in this document, so mine was instantaneous. If you go back to wireframe view after you've rendered OpenGL and then back to OpenGL, it will become quick again. It's just the first time that takes a while for the geometry to calculate. This angle is actually pretty good, but we've accidentally deselected the camera. So we'll go back to top plane view, Click the camera, and click Activate Camera. You'll notice now it stays in OpenGL view because we set that rendering mode here. We want to tweak this just a little bit, so we'll click Fine Tune Camera View, and you'll notice the render mode stayed here in OpenGL. You could change this back to wireframe if you really wanted to, but OpenGL, I find at least, is the easiest to do camera work in. We're a little off center, and I want to look straight on at the building, so we're going to move the camera to the right slightly. This will move, camera move left right, will move the camera in relation to where I'm looking. Do you see how that middle bar in the window there stays exactly the same spot? And how there's a little selection handle below it? That's because I've selected that almost exactly. We also want to go up just a little bit. Now the camera height controls how high up and down the camera actually is, the camera itself. The look to height, or what we're aiming at, stays the same. If we want to change the look to height, You'll see we nose up and nose down a little bit. But right about in the middle is what we want. We want a little bit of sky and a little bit of grass. There we are. Now, camera distance and focal length, uh, we can touch a little bit here, but we'll pretty much leave them at these defaults going ahead. If you drag the camera distance closer, you'll see it just physically moves the camera in, and dragging it to the left physically moves the camera out. Now, that's not the same as zoom, which is down here a little lower. For zoom, which is generally set at the focal distance, you'll see the perspective starts to skew pretty significantly as I go in and as I go out. That's different than simply moving the camera in and out. We'll frame us back up the way we were. There we are. And there we go. Generally, you're not going to mess with perspective too very much. Uh, the default normal perspective, which is this, per this that we have right here, is generally OK but you can tweak it slightly if you want. You'll see the objects just sort of point shift in and out of each other. But the object we're focusing on, of course, stays exactly where it is, same as if you were focusing on that with a regular camera. We'll click OK, and now our camera has all the settings we left with it. What we're going to do is we're going to create another camera. However, we want to make sure we deactivate this camera first. If we don't do that, then when we move around, we would accidentally drag that camera with us and lose this angle that we had already set up. So I'll click away or hit X twice on the keyboard to deselect all objects. Now we'll go to the walkthrough tool, and we're going to take a little stroll inside the building. We'll switch to gamer mode here. And in gamer mode, you click once with the mouse, 
and the view locks to your cursor. And you can see we can move around here. We're just turning. We don't actually move where we are in this mode. It just changes where we're facing. And you can also use the W, A, S, and D keys. In this case, we'll do A to slide to the left a little bit. And then we'll press W to move forward a little bit. We're going to be going into the second floor close to us. And now the Z and C keys are used to go up and down. So we'll hit Z a few times to zoom up. Got us on the second floor. And we're going to be moving into the building. We'll use D to strafe to the right there while we're holding while we have the mouse selected. And then we'll use S to back up. We really just want to get a view of this room very briefly. There we are. Now, we didn't bring the camera with us, so we'll want to create another camera. However, rather than going back into top plan, which we really don't want to do, because we have the view the way we want it, we'll just take the RenderWorks camera, and we'll literally just draw it right here on the table. <laughs> that won't matter, because we're going to click this button, Match Current View. The camera has now taken our view, and if we click Activate Camera, you'll see that it goes to wireframe, since we had it defaulting to wireframe. But these blue corners have showed up again like they did last time. They indicate that you have a camera active. We'll change this to OpenGL like we had it before. And then we'll change the current rendering with this other menu to OpenGL. And if we wanted to, we could use Fine Tune, and we could adjust this camera angle like we did the last one. But this is pretty close to what we want. This is referred to as an interior scene. The other camera is referred to as an exterior scene. But now I'll show you what the reason is we set up cameras. We'll deselect everything. Then we'll go back to top plan view. You'll see here camera 5 and camera 4. Cameras number themselves automatically after you created them. I've apparently made three more in this document. So they would have been cameras 1, 2, and 3. We just made 4 and 5 here, which should be the same number for your document. If I click this camera and then click Activate Camera, I'll be taken to that same view I was before. And if I go back to Top Plan View, select the second camera, and click Activate Camera, there's the second view I set up. This makes it very easy to quickly navigate back to places in your document without having to do a bunch of save views or without having to manually use the walkthrough tool to get there every single time. Cameras can also maintain settings such as rendering, perspective, and things like that, which works similarly to saved views, but there's something else that we want to cover too. Cameras can be attached to viewports directly. So we currently have an active RenderWorks camera. I'm going to go to View and Create Viewport. You'll see a little notice. It says that the selected RenderWorks camera object can be used for the viewport's view. Do you want to link the camera to the viewport? And I do want to do this. I'll say yes. And we don't need to mess with this too much. We can just create new sheet layer. And we'll just call it My Render Works Cameras. We'll leave the properties as default. That's fine. Hit OK and hit OK. Now we'll be taken to a sheet layer with our viewport on it. And we can see that it's in wireframe. That's just because it hasn't been updated before. If we hit update, it'll render in OpenGL the same as if we had had it in the actual document. Now keep in mind when I do these renderings, uh, OpenGL C didn't take very long at all, but some of the other renderings may take quite a long time. If that happens, I'll warn you that I'm going to skip ahead, and you can just pause the video while you wait for yours to update. Now we see I have my viewport, but if I go back to my document, so we'll click in the layers, and we'll go back to the cameras layer, which is where we were editing the cameras before. See, OpenGL right where we left. We'll go back to top plan view. And we'll do the same thing to this other camera. We'll select this. We'll make that the active camera. Look familiar? And we'll go to View, Create Viewport. And we'll put it, it'll ask us the same question. You can say always do the selected action here as long as you know this is what you want. You don't always want to create a viewport from a camera, but if you leave this alert message up, you'll make sure you never accidentally do it in the future. Put it on that same sheet layer and click OK. There we are. Now we have our exterior and interior renders. And we'll update that to OpenGL as well. And now, if we want to, if we go back into top plan view, 
on that layer. We'll go back to the cameras layer and it'll still be in that camera view. We'll go back to top plan view though. You'll see these cameras are no longer present. That doesn't mean they're gone, they're just no longer here on the document area. If we want to change those later, we can go back to our sheet layer, My Renderworks Cameras, and we can edit those cameras through the viewports. Right click on a viewport and you can choose Edit Camera and it's going to alert you what is going to be done. You can delete the camera if you want, but what we're going to do, we'll hit OK for this. You'll see in the Object Info Palette that a Renderworks camera is selected by default. If you ever accidentally deselect it and you have a hard time finding it again, just click Return to Viewport and then click Edit the Camera again. It'll bring you right back in and the Renderworks camera will be selected. Go ahead and hit Return to Viewport now. And in the next chapter, we're going to cover Renderworks camera effects, which is the main reason we made these two viewports from cameras.